Hello everybody and welcome to another pomade review. And the pomades that we're going to be looking at today is the 1950s line. So I say multiple pomades because today we're going to be looking at an entire line of products. Uh, reason being that I overall wasn't that impressed by them, so I thought I'd just lump them all together because I didn't feel like it was worth stretching out the entire line into all these separate kinds of videos. Um, so here's what they are. They're these ones, <laughs> you've seen a couple of them in uh, videos I've done before in the past just because they've been featured and I've done other stuff with them. Um, but yeah, these are them. They are Canadian and so not made in the U.S. And they are barber made and you can find them in a handful of barber shops that are wholesale but overall a semi widely distributed product. Um, it has been around for a couple years and I was lucky enough to have the brewer send, or not really brewer because they're factory made, but have the main guy who distributes them get in contact with me and wanted me to review them. So let's get into it. So the way I wanted to review them because there are five, I wanted to go down to the one that first impressed me the most and then trickle down into the ones that I really wasn't all that impressed with. So overall the entire line, like I said, I wasn't overly impressed with all of it, um, but it should go to show first off with the presentation. The presentation of the products are really good. It's, it's a really fun container. Um, all of them come in these nice cube shaped jars, which I've never seen anywhere else have a hair pomade in it. So really neat containers. And they all have the same kind of uh, design and scheme to them. Very classy, very professional, very, very fun looking. Otherwise, a lot of them, they all have this picture on there. I think it's kind of hokey, but <laughs> other than that, they look really, really nice, very appealing to the eye. They, they definitely catch your attention. When, uh, th whenever anybody looks at my collection now, their eyes are always drawn to stuff that looks like this, stuff that looks unique and fun. So I love the design of them and the design is really good. But the product in and of itself leaves a lot to be desired. So first one I wanted to talk about was the matte clay. This one over the entire line, I have to say, did impress me the most because I felt it was the most unique. It was trying something new. Um, was it necessarily all that great? That's, eh, I feel like more subjective, but it's a matte clay that first alarming thing was the ingredients. First ingredient is petroleum. So I know not all matte clays, you know, some of them are water-based, but a bit different and kind of strange that it's petroleum based, it being a matte clay and there's not prominently a clay product in it, so it's not really a matte clay. So what I liked about it though that I felt, okay, I can dig it, it's being unique. It felt like a petroleum based product when I styled it in my hair. Combed it up, it was nice, and then when I went on throughout the day, it started to loosen up and, and it became more malleable. I could run my hands through my hair. It felt more like a clay. So when in like a petroleum, I, so I could see where a happy medium could be. Whereas if you're someone like me who likes cleaner styles and then you do that. And then if later in the day you're like, eh, I want to run my hands through my hair. Cool. It can do that. And it's good at it, but I don't think it's amazing. I think it's just decent and fine. Uh, here's the product on the inside. And this one just kind of smells like the ingredients. Uh, the other ones do have some nicer smells to them, but this one just kind of smells like the ingredients. So like a weak, weak, this is a stretch, like coconut or vanilla, but weak. But yeah, there you go. That was my favorite in the line. Next one that I thought was okay, you know, trying something new and was good, but definitely not groundbreaking was the texturizing cream, this one, uh, the silver one. And good thing to know is that it smells very good. <laughs> it's like a floral kind of deep, um, I'm not good with scents, but it's like a deep floral cologne-ish kind of smell thing. So, right, um, what this one performs like is 
I tried it one day when my hair was completely bone dry and I hated it. It was really, it was bad. Um, I was so frustrated that I ended up washing my hair and putting in something else because I was that frustrated and I didn't get it to work. Because all that would happen was I would apply it and the volume would just go like bloop and it wouldn't have any, surprisingly enough, no texture in something called a texturizing cream. People could say, oh, you used too much or you weren't using a blow dryer. I don't think you need a blow dryer to get texturized styles and if you do need a blow dryer to make a product good, I don't know, for me that I see a crippled product <laughs> with that. But regardless, I tried it again with my hair wet and it styled up just okay. It felt like a cream in my hair because texturizing cream. And once I styled it up, then further on as the day went by, it, much like the matte clay, felt malleable, I could run my hands through my hair, uh, felt very nice and everything was overall quite well structured. So this one is like, I was kind of torn, but it was unique. I will hand it, I will hand that to them. It wasn't just a carbon copy of some other thing, you know, it had some personality to it. Was it the best thing I've ever tried? No. Would I go out of my way to use it? Not really, but unique nonetheless, they tried. Next one in the line that I felt was next to be all right was the oil-based. They had a petroleum-based one that um, all these other ones, except for the matte clay, are water-based, but this one is petroleum-based. So it's their market is or oil-based, like ooh, old school, like Man, I'm tired of saying that, but old school product, and yes, this is it. Um, it smells like green Jolly Ranchers, and I don't really like that. Um, it's, imagine if Ruzel Green, like, just smelled more like candy. That's what it smells like. And I can say that this product, it was fine. It was 100% totally fine. But the reason I put it so far down and it's not up there is because it is so remarkably average. It is just safe, no boundaries are crossed, nothing new is being explored. And these products, they because they are international, they demand a higher price. And I don't think something so remarkably average should be that safe, you know, and, and uh, it's, it is just average, basic, normal, nothing special. I styled it up, my hair looked fine, medium hold, medium shine, styled fine, everything was perfect, everything was good, but there was nothing special. There was nothing that wowed me. There was nothing that was all that great. And I think a great sin that you can have in the pomade world is making something so unbelievably average. So, eh. It was all right. Next one that is next lowest down is the original pomade, or, you know, is a jelly type water base. And uh, this one smells like, yeah, mm, it's good, but it's just kind of like a funky Axe cologne. Imagine that, <laughs> like funky Axe cologne. That's what it smells like. Um, fine nonetheless, but not the greatest. Um, yet another reason I just was so unhappy with this one is it is just average, just normal, basic, nothing special. Every other gel type water base is, performs the same way. Go get Steadfast, Layrite, Suavecito, it's, it's generally the same stuff. Uh, and this one is no different in my eyes. I tried it and it was just, just another gel type water base. I wasn't wowed, I wasn't blown away. There are a few gel type water bases I have used that I've been like, you know, this is different. Are they good? I don't know, but some of them, it's subjective as well, but just not overall that impressive. You know, something like Imperial, where it hardens up so flippin' hard, that's unique, you know, it's, it it's, depends on who would like it, but it is unique nonetheless. Uh, something like Tremolo's water base, rest in peace, <laughs> it's that that one, it didn't harden up as much and it was very malleable even after usage. Cool Grease, 
It's a gel tech one, but it's really unique. Uh, fiber grease. But this is just normal, average, basic, nothing special. And that's why I didn't care for it. And in last place is the Stronghold Pomade, which is a strong holding water base. For me, this is the probably the hardest kind of product to impress me with. I don't like Stronghold gel type water bases because they all are the same in my eyes. That companies think that what people want when they want a stronger holding water base just means hardening harder. But no, I would much rather have a product that has more, maybe if it was thicker, maybe if it gave you more volume initially as you're styling, something more versatile while your hair is moist, but just having something that feels exactly like the original hold, but just hardens up. It felt identical to this one, but it hardened up so rock hard and stiff. In my how to use a matte clay for, mo for non-modern styles video, I used this for my side part because it hardens up like a rock. <laughs> Not because I was like, oh, this is really good, you should try it. But no, it's, it falls the least or lowest in the category for me because it's just outdated, unimpressive, a million other cheaper and better alternatives and just not worth the money. Um, but it does smell the nicest out of all of them, I would say. It's, it does smell pretty good. It's yet another safe Cologne Old Spice slash Axe body spray scent, but does smell halfway decent. It's always pretty good. All right, uh, that's what I think about 1950s. Um, overall, final verdict for the entire line, fantastic presentation, very average execution. Um, bad products, not at all. Uh, just remarkably average, nothing that special, nothing to write home about. It's pretty hard these days to impress me with products. And there have been some that I've been like, wow, this is new and this is creative and this is fun. A lot of companies are trying new things and trying new things, even when people are like, oh, no, you can't make anything new. What, what more can you do? But there are companies that are. One thing I think, the one that comes right up to the top of my head is Lockhart's. They have been releasing so many new stuffs in the past few months. And there's no reason not to be lucrative. And when you just go back to before, you make something averaging basic, there's nothing that makes it stand out, and that's a major issue that I have with these products. I don't think they're terrible, they're just unbelievably average. Well, thank you very much for watching my video, and funny enough, by complete coincidence, I made a review for these products the same week as Modern Man TV, which is Mike Smith. So, Mike Smith is my good buddy over at Modern Man TV, and he makes flippin' awesome videos. They are way higher production quality than mine and he's overall a really cool guy. So at the end of this video, I just wanted to give a shout out to him. If you've never watched Modern Man TV, I recommend it. Go watch his review of these products. He's a cool guy and he deserves all the other support from my channel because I love him. He's a cool guy. But I also love you guys and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff and bye.